The Bible is a book for times such as these. Written in, it's written in desperate situations and plagues of all types. During a pandemic, it is easy to think, during this particular pandemic, it's, it's easy to think that this is a one-off. But since the beginning, there are various kinds of plagues that have afflicted mankind. There are various kinds of plagues that have afflicted mankind. The plague of Satan's rebellion. The plague of Satan's rebellion, if you didn't hear me carefully. It's, um, it's on a universal uh, scale that it has been uh, um, uh, plaguing us. The, um, the plague of original sin. The plague of um, corruption in mankind. The plague of uh, mismanagement, human mismanagement. The plague of pride and sin. So many different things have been plaguing mankind. I know that uh, when we hear the word pandemic and uh, uh, sometimes we think that this is some sort of new event. Um, in some sense there are certain uniqueness about what the world is going, going through right now. But um, it is a plague nonetheless. And... Um, uh, that's, you know, something that's, it's not something new. Um, so the Bible is, is what we need to turn to. I mean, this is a time that I'm praying, that I know that you are praying, churches are praying, that people will turn to the Bible. Because the Bible is, is, is loud in times like these. Uh, you're not going to find the comfort that you find in the Bible anywhere else. Praise God. It is, a, it is uh, written, it is designed for the things that you, are, that, that you are going through right now. Or the things that people are experiencing right now. It is so relevant. Uh, every day that I read the scripture, um, it, it, it is like God is speaking to exactly what is going on. Praise God. So what are the lessons in the Bible that we get? God is not surprised by what's going on. So what is God already... He's already prepared us for, for a time like this by the scriptures that he's given us. Thank you, Jesus. The church, the Christian, needs a clear vision of God's kingdom. I want to turn your attention to Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 4. The scripture reads, Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 4. It reads like this, In the, king of, in the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, lofty and exalted, with the train of his robe filling the temple. I want to read on verse 2 and 3 as well. And it says, Seraphim stood before him, each having six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. With two he flew. And one called out to the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold trembled at the voice of the seraphim of him who called out while the temple was filling with the smoke of the glory of God. Praise God. It's such an exciting scripture. The prophet Isaiah receives this vision in, in this chapter, chapter 6. Uh, he receive, receives it very specifically. It's at a very specific time. It says in the year of King Uzziah's death. Praise God. I don't know if many of us have considered who this King Uzziah is or what's his background. And one of the things I want to encourage you as we are doing Bible study, I want to encourage you is to study scripture in context. When it mentions a king, I encourage you to go and study and uh, look into other passages of scripture that are connected to that king. It will give you a revelation, I'm telling you. It will, be, it will give you a revelation. So this is, um, uh, it is so connected with this king's death. It is the introduction to this glorious vision. Isn't that strange? Isn't that strange, church? Isn't that something that should um, um, should, should uh, tickle us, tickle our, our inquisitiveness, our curiosity? Why does this great vision have uh, this as its background? Who is this king who's there? You know, we've been doing this uh, topic of the heart matters. And um, as we look at this king, we realize that that same battle, the same battle that we have been speaking about transpired in this king's life. 
transpired in this king's life. Now you you would um, he's uh, King Uzziah is also known by another name, and that is uh, Azariah. He's also known by the name Azariah. He's found uh, you will find find mention of him in Second Kings, chapter fourteen and verse twenty one. Uh, he ascended to the throne when he was just 16 years old. Let that sink in. He ascended the throne of Judah when he was just 16 years old. 16. Yes, you heard me right. 16 years old. And he ruled for 52 years. He ascended the throne when he was 16 years old and he ruled for... 52 years. That is more than the amount of time that David ruled Israel. Is that amazing? 52 years. If you are to read, and I, I want you to turn to this uh, passage in um, 2 Chronicles, chapter 26. And again, I'll read for you uh, 2 Chronicles, chapter 26, and verse 1. All the people of Judah took Uzziah who was 16 years old and made him king in the place of his father Amaziah. You can say that in some ways a very democratically elected um, uh, king, King Uzziah. It says that the people of Judah took him. You know, it's like a majority uh, decided that this, this person would become king. They took him and made him king. Um, his uh, father had been uh, had a military failure he was he had been killed you can read more about that in second kings chapter 14 and uh, verse 19 uh, he was killed in a in a in a military event um, and uh, so abruptly this boy was put up uh, to be king king Uzziah, the same king that is mentioned in isaiah chapter 6 and then on it goes in verse 2 second chronicles chapter 26 and verse 2 it says he built eloth and restored it to judah after the king slept with his fathers. Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king. And he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name, Jechaliah of Jerusalem. And then verse 4 on, it uh, starts to describe this king. This is a fascinating description. He says, he did right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah had done. He starts off being a righteous king at 16 years old. Praise God. Some of you are maybe 16 years old or maybe older. Uh, or round about in that age. It will be amazing what God will put you, um, what kind of responsibility God can give you. 16 years old, he became the king of Judah. He did right in the sight, verse 4 says, He did right in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father Amaziah has do had done. He continued to seek God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding through the vision of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God prospered him. A very specific mention of uh, the secret of Uzziah's success. Praise God. Verse 4 says, He did right in the sight of God. I hope and I pray and bless you, even as we've been doing this study on the heart matters. The only way for us to rectify our hearts is to recognize that God is always watching us. The presence of God, He is the one we must please. And He is pleased with the heart. In verse 5, it says, what was uh, special about Uzziah, that when Zechariah was over him, that he came under the authority of Zechariah, the prophet of God, a minister of God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I know that God is ministering to you. There is great prosperity. There is success in the eyes of God when you, when you submit to the authorities that God has put in your life. Praise God. When you submit to the authorities God has put in your, in your life. If you are right now at home with your parents, fret not. If you are in the right place, if you are there because of God's will, being under the authority God has placed over you is a blessed place. Praise God. In verse 5 it says, He continued to seek God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding through the vision of God. As long as he sought the Lord, God prospered him. See, 
King Uzziah's success was he captured God's kingdom, uh, the order of God's kingdom. What do we need to do right now in this situation around us? Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, submit to God, submit to God and, and uh, stay in the boundaries God has set for you. Praise the Lord. Maybe you need to hear this. Stay in the boundaries God. It may look a little difficult. But stay in the boundaries God has set you. Zechariah was a boundary set for King Uzziah. And as long as he's, he uh, came under that order of God, praise the Lord, that order of God. And uh, you will see this in, in the Old Testament. The, the order was very clear. God, the prophet and the priest, and then the king. Let me repeat that. God, the prophet and the priest, and then the king. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And that was the order. And um, um, King Uzziah, very early in life, he was 16 years old, praise the Lord. 16 years old, he decided to come under that, that order of God and he prospered, he succeeded. And then from verse 6 on, it's absolutely incredible. From verse 6, it, it describes this, um, the, uh, the successes of King Uzziah. Um, I'm, not, I'm not going to read the entirety of it, but there is success after success. Verse 6, uh, he warred against the Philistines. He broke down the wall of Gath and uh, different walls, the wall of Ashdod. He built cities. In verse uh, 7, it says, God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabians. Uh, then against Mennonites. The Ammonites also gave tribute to King Uzziah. They gave tribute. Are you, are you listening? Verse 8 says the Ammonites gave tribute to King Uzziah. His fame extended to the border of Egypt. He became famous for, for the glory of God upon him. The wisdom of God upon him. In fact, it says in verse 10 onwards, it speaks about towers that he built in the wilderness. It speaks about cisterns that he set up an agricultural a, a, uh, system uh, of, of irrigation cisterns. He, he, um, he had livestock. He, um, um, he had plowmen, wine dressers in the hill, hill country. And um, he loved the soil. And he got uh, blessed of God even in the produce of the land. In verse 11 again it says, Moreover, verse 11 says, Moreover, he had an elite army. In fact, I want to read this. Verse 11 says, Uzziah had an army ready for battle. Verse 11. Moreover, Uzziah had an army ready for battle, who entered combat by divisions, according to the number of their muster. This is long before the Romans. Okay, they entered battle by divisions, according to the number of their muster. They were prepared by specialists, officials, under the direction of Hananiah, one of the king's officers. Verse 12 says, the total number of the heads of the households of valiant warriors was 2,600 valiant warriors. Maybe modern commandos, so to speak. In verse 13 it says, under their direction a light army of 307,500 who could wage war with great power. These are very unique words. It's not found very often in scripture. When it describes the kings, not just the kings of, of Judea and Israel, even the kings of uh, nations around them, is very, very rarely such accolades are given. And uh, it says that this elite army could wage war with great power to help the king against the enemy. And verse 14 says he was also um, uh, prospering and uh, uh, way ahead in technology. It says in verse 14, Uzziah prepared for all the army, shields and spears, helmets, body armor, bows and sling stones. In Jerusalem, very interesting, in verse 15, in Jerusalem he made engines of war, invented by skillful men to be on the towers and on the corners for the purpose of shooting arrows and great stones. His fame, hence his fame spread afar, for he was marvelously helped until he was strong. He was marvelously helped by God. Whew. This is the King Uzziah we are talking about. We are talking about a period of great prosperity. Period of great uh, increase in technology. Technology. People were seeing um, great development. They were experiencing for such a long period of time. Um, they are experiencing such uh, security. 
this section that we just read is a list of positives, successes, expansions, technological and scientific advances. Does it remind you of um, a, a situation that we, uh, we were in just a few, um, let's just say maybe a few, about a year and a half back, the world was in sort of that kind of um, boastfulness, a, 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 a technological advances. I know that uh, so many of you, uh, it is highly likely want to return to that sort of a sense of security. Um, and the world desperately uh, is desperately wanting uh, that kind of security. Uh, many people during King Hosea's time, maybe even Isaiah, when we read that chapter 6, it does look like Isaiah is, uh, is, uh, is ministered by this vision at the death of King Uzziah. This is interesting, isn't it? He is ministered by this vision of God uh, at the death of King Uzziah. And it is likely that he is representing a condition in, in Judah uh, generally. Overall, people you know, got comfortable with King Uzziah and uh, what he had brought about. Many people would have uh, settled into a, a false sense of security. It's highly likely. We must be careful. One of the lessons of uh, what the world has uh, gone through in the last one and a half years, one of the lessons that I believe the Lord wants to minister uh, to believers and unbelievers that are alike, it is better to trust in God. It is better to trust in God. And... Um, Let's uh, read on in verse 16, okay, in the passage in, in Chronicles, um, verse 16, when he became strong, when he became strong, his heart was so proud that he acted corruptly. His heart was so proud. Praise the Lord, the heart matters. The heart matters. He was a man at the, you know, he's at the crescendo of success. At the crescendo of success, King Uzziah. But he did not guard his heart. Pride entered his heart. His heart was so proud, he acted corruptly. The scripture says he was unfaithful to the Lord, his God, for he entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Incense. Excuse me. Pride entered his heart. And um, this is why we, we encourage you, guard your heart. Guard your heart. Praise the Lord. Guard your heart. From your heart will proceed uh, wickedness. If you allow pride to take root, if you allow that which is displeasing in the eyes of God, if you allow it to take root in your heart, many people would not be, most people looking at King Hosea would still have been in that uh, sort of starstruck by his outward appearance. But Pride had begun to creep into his heart. And what did he do? He broke the order that God had placed. Isn't this incredible? He broke the order that God had in place. Much, I know it will remind you of King Saul. Is it incredible that, um, that sin and pride caused one to break the order of God? God-given order was broken. I don't think I have to list for you the transgressions of this generation. I hope that you have moved past to why Corona or why this situation, why this pandemic. I hope that you're trusting in the mighty arm of God. God knows. It would be a shame, I've written down in my notes, it would be a shame if we as Christians are not aware of the headlines of heaven. It would be a shame if we as Christians are not 
aware of the headlines of heaven. We are, we are um, more aware of the headlines of Manorama or BBC or CNN or, uh, you know, our um, people around us and the different things they are speaking or our WhatsApps or things that are being shared on Facebook. I hope that we are more aware of the headlines in heaven. And in this time and uh, through the things that this, the world is going through, that you are turning your heart and your mind to God's perspective. I, I pray and bless you with God's perspective. Verse 17 says, as King Hosea is entering the temple and uh, about to burn the incense, about to break the order of God, filled with pride. Verse 17 says, Azariah, Azariah the priest, then Azariah the priest, entered with him and with 80 priests of the Lord, valiant men. Praise the Lord. Valiant men. Praise God. May the Lord be able to say that about us in this period of time. Valiant men in the eyes of heaven. Here was a king, he was a, here was a king with an elite army. Here was a king with an elite army. A king with so much worldly power behind him. That is, um, in a worldly sense, he has a uh, number of, of uh, weapons, number of um, commandos, special uh, warriors. But the scripture is very specific that the priests were valiant men. We, the priests, the servants of God, may heaven look at us in a period like this, in a time like this. May heaven look at us and describe us with these sort of words, I pray. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would cause us to be filled with boldness. Filled with boldness. I have much to share on that, on those lines uh, as we go on forward. In verse 18 says, They opposed King Uzziah. It didn't matter who it was. These valiant men of God opposed Uzziah the king. One who was famous in the nations. King Uzziah. The one who put fear in the nations. The priests were fearless. Praise God. And they said to him, It is not for you, Uzziah, to burn the incense to the Lord, but for the priests. Get out of the sanctuary, for you have been unfaithful and will have no honor from the Lord God. Verse 19 says, see, if you don't deal with your heart, if you don't submit your heart to God. Verse 19 reads like this, but Hosea, with a censer in his hand from, for burning incense, was enraged, angry. And while he was enraged with the priests, the leprosy broke out on his forehead before the priests in the house of the Lord beside the altar of incense. While he was enraged. He was enraged, it says, and then it says, and while he was enraged. We have been considering that scripture in Psalm 2. Why do the nations rage? Why do the nations um, devise things against the Lord? The Lord laughs. He was enraged in his pride. And that very moment, the scripture very specifically says, the leprosy broke out. Much like, yes, I don't have to mention the name, much like what we are facing. A plague broke out on his forehead. Verse 20 says, Azariah and the chief priests, Look closely at this scripture. Verse 20 says, Azariah and the chief priests and all the priests looked at him. Behold, he was leprous on his forehead. They hurried him out of there. The man who was filled with rage, enraged, ready to do that which is displeasing to God, in a few moments, is now in this position where he is to be carried, he has to be removed from that place with the help of the very priests that he was enraged against. The church, the church, the church, the church, 
must minister. This is an opportunity for the church. The church must minister. It says that uh, the chief priest took him out, and then in verses 21 to 23, you can uh, read it for yourself. It describes about how the rest of his days, King Uzziah uh, had to struggle with, with leprosy, and then he finally passed. This is the background of Isaiah's vision. This is the background of Isaiah's vision. A condition of the heart that had destroyed a king. A condition of the heart that had, that had, um, that, uh, you know, to connect with the things that we are going on. The condition of, a heart, of the hearts of men that has left us in a situation like this. I want us to apply these scriptures, apply what is, what is happening in this passage. As I remind you of Isaiah chapter 6, know that God is aware. When Uzziah is brought low, the Lord has not changed. When Uzziah was, was uh, riding on the heights of the earth, the Lord has not changed. We serve a kingdom far above, my dear Christian. We serve a kingdom far above all rule and authority. And every name that is named. He is above every name that is named. Not only in this age, but also in the age to come. In, he is above everything. Know that God is aware. He has prepared His church for a time like this. The Bible in your hands. The Spirit of God inside of you. He has prepared you for a time like this. The Lord put, put this in my heart to minister to you that your heart was created by God to serve Him in a time like this. Like the priests, valiant men of God. Isaiah chapter 6 verses 4 to 9 it says the foundations of the thresholds trembled at the voice of him who called out and the temple was filled with smoke. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Amen. And there is a response from Isaiah. Verse 5 says then I said woe is me for I am ruined. Isaiah is speaking convicted by the Holy Spirit. Here is a man offering uh, repentance, offering acceptance, offering uh, uh, a new perspective. He says, Woe is me, for I am ruined, because I am a man of unclean lips. I am a man of unclean lips. The presence of God this, this evening may convict you. May convict you that, you know, if it has been anything else on your lips, other than the counsel of God, if anything else has been on your lips, then the high praises of God, if anything else has been on your lips, then rather than thoughts, that are subject to the, the, the glory of Jesus Christ. Amen. React like Isaiah. Humble yourself. I know that we are, most of us in Kerala, in parts of um, India, we're locked down. You know, some of you, um, they may be listening to us from other countries. But I know that in, in your particular area, you've already experienced some sort of effect of this pandemic. Maybe a lockdown, maybe restrictions. Um, I know that um, there has been some sort of inconvenience. What is our reaction to what is going on around us? Uh, the death of Isaiah, um, uh, a king, uh, a death of a system, uh, a death of a certain form of security that we had. It is to turn to God. What must our reaction be? Turn, turn our hearts to God. Humble yourself before God. Humble your hearts before God. Get ready. Get ready. The Lord has something for you to do in this season. It says in verse 5, Isaiah says, Woe is me, for I am ruined. I am a man of unclean lips. I live among a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew, that's verse 6, then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal in his hand, which he had taken from the altar with tongs. He touched my mouth with it and said, This has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away. Your sins are forgiven. And verse 8. Your sins are forgiven. I want to remind you this evening. Maybe you have been brought to a place of quietness. Maybe some of you are brought to a place of disappointment. I'm not sure. But this is the time. I do not know what is transpiring in your heart. But I want to minister this word to you. The Lord wants to cleanse you. The Lord wants to cleanse you. 
He wants to restore you. He wants to strengthen your heart. He wants to strengthen your heart. Receive the strengthening of heaven. There is a kingdom. There is a kingdom that is not shaken. Praise the Lord. Our God is seated on the throne. He has a plan and purpose for your life. Yes, right now. He has a plan and purpose for your life. And the Lord is touching you with the call of His Word. That burning call of His Word. I sense that the Lord is touching you with the burning call of His Word this evening. Turn your eyes to Jesus. Turn your eyes to Jesus. This world is passing away. Turn your eyes to Jesus. He has a purpose for your life. And then verse 8 says, listen carefully. Verse 8 says, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us for the kingdom of God? Hallelujah. Who will go for us? The kingdom of God. Whom shall I send? The voice of God. The Lord speaking. Amen. This glorious God seated on that throne is calling out your name. You have a purpose. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. You are called to serve God. Go out and make disciples. The Lord is speaking to you. Yes, you. Make disciples. Amen. Preaching the gospel to the ends of the earth. Thank you, Lord. I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Then I said, and please echo with me. Verse 8 says, Here I am. Send me. Here I am. Send me. And God said, Go. God said, Go. I want to encourage you to pour yourself into the service and awareness of the one kingdom that cannot be shaken. Let me repeat that. Pour yourself into the service and awareness of the one kingdom that cannot be shaken. Read your Bible more than ever. Read your Bible more than ever. Pray without ceasing. Pray focused. God has put people into your heart to pray. You're going to see miracles. God has put people into your heart to pray for. Pray focused prayers. Turn those headlines into prayers. Turn those reports you're getting into prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Find out what you can do for your neighbor. Find out what you can do for your neighbor. Financial help. Maybe physical help. Yes, the Lord is saying, give. One of the things that the church in the book of Acts, they did when a calamity came across the land, the, uh, a famine came across the land, is they got immediately, they got connected with it. Uh, there are people that, you know, you need to reach out to. Find ways in which you can give. Find ways, maybe you can give in kind, in some way. Maybe you can help some organization, some organization that is helping people in this situation. Give. The Lord says give. Yes, the Lord says give. Uh, be physically available for somebody. Uh, find out what you can do. Find out. Be active now. Praise the Lord. The church of God, the kingdom of God, the Holy Spirit is under no lockdown. Get active now. Be active now. People need the gospel now. Call your boss. Preach the gospel. Call your boss. Preach the gospel. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Call, call your colleague. Preach the gospel. Tell them about this unshakable kingdom. You'll be surprised. In a time like this, I believe there is a great harvest coming to the church. There is a great harvest of people that are frustrated with the systems of this world. The hypocrisy of this world. There are people that are, will be frustrated with it. And they're looking. They're seeking. They're seeking. Praise God. Be a minister of God's comfort, peace, and love. Be a minister of God's comfort, peace, and love. You know, look at Jesus. Jesus dealt with the plague of the Roman Empire. He ministered to people around him. Around him. Affected by this, this the Roman Empire was a plague on Israel. It was a plague on many nations. The gospel was the balm that um, people um, received. Praise God. Be like Jesus. Preach the kingdom. Preach the gospel. Comfort people. Teach them. Tell them scriptures. Very specifically, the Spirit of God is saying, tell them scriptures. Jesus dealt with the plague of the Roman Empire. The indifferent religious order of his time. A failed system. 
a failed religious system. He dealt with the effects of that. Jesus also dealt with the same plague that we read of that, that uh, struck King Uzziah. He dealt with the same plague, the plague of leprosy. And I don't have to speak about how Jesus dealt with it. Think about it. Pick up your phone. Call people. Pray for them. Pray God's protection. Expect miracles. Pray, God, pray for God people's healing. They may be in hospitals. I do not know where. But call them. Pray for them. The Holy Spirit is telling you. Call them. Pray for them. And uh, miracles will happen. He's the same. Jesus is still the same. And uh, see how Jesus dealt with those um, that, that were under the curse of leprosy. Um, praise God. The Lord also one had put this in my heart to minister. Don't lose heart to some of you that uh, are wondering, what should I do? I, I was doing what God asked me to do. And now look at this and, and the disruption that this has brought. But the Lord is saying, what you need to do is don't lose heart. Stay in that place of obedience. Don't lose heart. Stay in that place of obedience. Don't lose heart. Continue to do what God has asked you to do. Listen carefully. Continue to do what God has asked you to do. Praise the Lord. Don't get distracted. And uh, I want to encourage you at this time, uh, with, for every newspaper you read, every article that you come across, every WhatsApp share that may be going on, every Facebook share or article that you may come across, resist depression. There is a spirit of depression around us. Resist the devil. The devil is bringing de depression and despondency. He has come to steal, kill and destroy. You turn your eyes to the one who is the shepherd of your soul. The shepherd of your soul. His name is Jesus. He is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful. Resist the devil. He is dealing with despondency, depression, hopelessness and lies. Lies. A lot of lies. Don't allow any of these to take root. Man shall not live by the media. Man shall not live by the media or the opinions and charity of men. Man shall live by the word of God. Man shall not live by the charity of the government. Man shall live by the word of God. Amen. We can say amen. Thank you, Jesus. This was Jesus' response to the devil in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. So you better believe it, that this is the response and this is how we resist the devil, is by living on the word of God. Read the Bible and meditate the Bible more than all the thoughts and ideas and opinions of men. Expect miracles. Expect miracles of provision. The Lord has said, expect miracles of provision. In a time, uh, time such as these, the Lord, will, the Lord will provide in miraculous manner. Expect. I experienced that in the previous uh, lockdown. I experienced God's marvelous provision. Marvelous provision. I can, it's like incredible provision of God. Thank you, Jesus. And I continue to experience it. So expect it. Don't lean on your own understanding. Expect great miracles from God. Expect healing from God. Wisdom. God will give you wisdom. Hallelujah. His loving kindness is everlasting. He pours extraordinary grace for extraordinary times. The Lord pours extraordinary grace for extraordinary times. Receive that grace. Yes, Lord, we receive that extraordinary grace. Say it with me. Yes, Lord, we receive that extraordinary grace right now for these extraordinary times. Thank you, Father. Keep your life in the perspective of the Word of God. We are here for a short period of time. Yes, we are here for a short period of time. I tell people this is just a gestation period for us. 70 to 100 years at best. We are here. It's just a gestation period. Our eternity lies before us. Let us serve the Lord with all our hearts. Praise God. Let us serve the Lord. How important it is to serve the kingdom of God. Don't be so caught up in your physical body. The Lord will take care of you. Amen. The Lord will take care of you. I have such amazing scriptures to read before I close. Matthew chapter 10 uh, verses 28 to 33. Matthew chapter 10 verses 28 to 33. Do not fear. Praise the Lord. Do not fear. Matthew chapter 10, verses 28 to 33. Do not fear those who kill the body, but are unable to kill the soul. Praise God. Do not fear that which can kill the body, but is unable to kill the soul. But rather fear God who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. 
Is that an incredible scripture? I know you've heard the scripture. But did you know that right after this, what the Lord said? Amazing, isn't it? Right after this verse, verse 28, this is what the Lord has to say. Are not two sparrows sold for a cent? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. See, just before this, he's speaking about fearing the one who is able to destroy body and soul. And then he speaks in verse 29 on, on how much this same God cares for your body. Did you hear me, church? Verse 28, many a times we are left in a place of sort of, what does that mean? We are, many, of, many of us read that scripture and we feel like, um, you know, so what about my physical being? But right after verse 28, the Lord emphasizes, verse after verse, He emphasizes how much God cares for your physical being. Check this out. Are not two sparrows sold for a cent? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But the very hairs of your head are numbered. That's your physical body. So do not fear. Again he repeats, do not fear. In verse 20 it says, do not fear. Because God is the one that's watching over your body and your soul. Praise the Lord. Some people take that scripture and, and speak exclusively of the soul. And, and uh, kind of tend to leave us in a place of uncertainty, uncertainty concerning the body. But then verse 29, 30 and 31 the Lord is dealing with our physical being and says, do not fear. Amen. I've numbered the hair on your head. Praise God. I don't think mankind will ever. Yes, they're interested in so many numbers. They want to give you a number for this, a number for that. But um, I don't think they will ever count the hair of every single human being. When Jesus said this, he knew that in the 21st century it's not going to happen. No government is ever going to be so interested in you to count the number of hair on your head. Today a lot of people are pretending that, that they care for us so much. Frankly, it's all very questionable what is going on. And about their care, it is very suspicious. But the Bible says, Jesus says, I've numbered your hair. And he said it because he knew nobody else is going to number your hair. He has numbered your hair. He can take care of your body. Do not fear. Verse 31 says, So do not fear. You are more valuable than many sparrows. Not a single one falls to the ground without the Father's death. Single one. But you are more valuable than many sparrows. Therefore, everyone who confesses me, what should we do now? In this situation, let us confess the name of the one who really cares for us. Praise God. Let us confess the name of the one who really cares for us. If you confess me before men, I will also confess him before my Father who is in heaven. Let us not deny. Yes, I hope that I, I, I strangely am worried that uh, your faith is affected with all kinds of news and all kinds of views that are uh, hammering at us every day. Uh, and the uncertainty and the and the storm that reminds me of the boat tossed by by those waves. Uh, I want to remind you. I want to remind you. Praise the Lord. Let us be confessing the one who cares for us and cares for us and cares for us both now and forever. I want you to read John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. John chapter 11. Verses 25 and 26. <clears throat> I hope you're there. John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. Jesus said to, to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. Praise the Lord. And everyone who lives and believes in me, verse 26, and everyone who, believe, who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Praise God. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? You will never die. You are in the hands of Jesus. Confess him before men. This is your opportunity. Confess him before men. Speak to people about the love of God. Show forth the love of God. Shine. Do good works. Where God is giving you opportunity, I encourage you, do good works. This is your time. The Lord is speaking to you. 
Some of you have been considering these good works. The Holy Spirit's encouraging you to do it. Go out there, minister the love of Christ. You know, find, uh, yeah, I don't necessarily mean that you, everyone needs to suddenly step out of their homes. Uh, do as the Holy Spirit leads you. You're going to get opportunity. Somebody's going to call you who has a requirement, a situation. Maybe your neighbor needs a help. Find out. Pray, pray, pray. This is the time to serve the Lord. Confess the great name of Jesus. There is a great harvest. So put on, uh, put on the righteousness of God. Put on the righteousness of Be innocent as doves. Wise as serpents. Put on the righteousness of God. The love of God. Be innocent as doves. Wise as serpents. Serve the King of Kings. Love your neighbor as yourself. Help those of the household of faith. I repeat that. Help those of the household of faith. Praise God. There are people that God has put under your care. People in your congregation. Uh, that will require your help. Thank you Jesus. Expect great things. To borrow from William Carey. This is, you were born for such a time as this. To, to speak from Esther. As you heard Pastor Minister a few, few weeks back. You were born for a time like this. Praise the Lord. You were born for a time like this. And to borrow from William Carey. I would like to declare. Expect great things. This is the time. Expect great things from God. Extraordinary grace. Miracles and provision. Expect great things from God. A great harvest. Attempt to great things by the Holy Spirit. I want to leave you with this passage of scripture. It's found in Romans chapter 1 and verse 17. The righteous shall live by faith. The righteous shall live by faith. No. Yes, it says they shall live. Live. They shall live. Jesus has sealed you with life. A life that no one can take away. Jesus has sealed you with life, a life that no one can take away. Praise the Lord. The righteous shall live by faith. Let your heart be filled with faith. Let us avoid the mistake that King Uzziah made. Let not our hearts be filled with pride. Let us not have reactions of pride and confusion and um, wickedness at this time. The Lord is seated on His throne. High and lifted up. Let our hearts be filled with that vision. Like Prophet Isaiah, I pray that your heart, in Jesus' name, I pray that your heart is filled with the same vision that Isaiah had. Seated on the throne, the Lord has filled, desires to fill His church with that vision. He is seated on the throne. Go. Go, minister. Repent, minister. Repent, minister. Humble yourself, minister. Get your perspective right. This is a season to get your perspective right. Let the perspective of your heart, your perspective of things all around you, that which fills your heart, you know, the, 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 the world view that you have, let it be inspired by the vision of God that we have just, that we have gazed upon in the scriptures. And the Lord has ministered to you this, this evening. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.